Good morning. Good morning. I am Kelly York. Um, I'm an English language arts professional learning specialist with Metro Risa, and I am happy to be partnering with the High Museum of Art and Georgia Department of Education in order to help us to read art like a text. I got the nods, got the nods. So what I'd like for you to do is, I'd like for you to turn, introduce yourself to your neighbor, and I want you to just share how you and your classrooms might um, help kids get into, through, and beyond the text. What are some strategies that you use to help kids to do that, okay? Go. All right, what are some, so who do I have in the room here? How many exceptional ed teachers do I have in the room? Special ed teachers, okay. How many media specialists do I have in the room? No media specialists? You're all media specialists. <laughs> How many English teachers do I have in the room? Elementary teachers? Social studies teachers? Speech pathologists, school psychologists, just kidding. <laughs> All right, well welcome, welcome. Um, I'm gonna ask you your name as we move um, throughout. You know me, but I don't quite know you yet. What I'd like for us to really think about, what are some ways, let's just spirit share. And when you hear me say spirit share, I'm saying share as the spirit moves you. So spirit share, go. What are some ways that we get into, go through, and get beyond the text? Prior knowledge. Prior knowledge. Teaching students to look at text features so they can identify, kind of get an overall scope of what is coming up or what could be coming up in the text. Okay. Mm -hmm. Associations. Okay. Associations. What else? Predictions. Predictions. What else? Critique. Critique. What is that? What did you, what do you like? What do you like? Anybody else? Vocabulary. Vocabulary. And so what we're doing is embedded as I go throughout, we're going to be doing um, conscious and, and unconscious, honestly, um, kind of the subconscious uh, instructional strategies that will lead us throughout. I think that as teachers, the more intentional that we are about how we're planning our lessons to help kids get into complex texts, then the more um, critical our kids can actually think about the content. So in this particular training, when you hear me refer to text, and even in our standards, when we're talking about text, we're not always talking about linguistic text. We're not always talking about the written print text. When I say text, in this case, images, art, photography, sculptures, but those things that we would find in the museum, that's what our text is going to be. And we're gonna be reading that text in a manner that helps us to negotiate and grapple with meaning without the artist being there with us, telling us, this is what I meant by that, okay? All right, so our goal for today is we'll leave with a strategy to help us to get into, go through, and beyond the text. We're gonna deepen our understanding of how we're gonna help students to read art like a text so that they can ultimately write, okay, and create some kind of product. If we don't do anything else today, everybody together collectively, what are we gonna do that last norm? Keep students at the heart of everything we do. If we keep them as our center focus, that helps us to stay on track with our planning, that helps us to stay on track with, why am I doing this activity? Who am I trying to reach? Whose needs am I trying to meet? And that being said, when we think about reading art like a text, and we're, when I say text in that respect, I'm talking about linguistic literacy. But reading the art is visual literacy. Turn and talk to your neighbor about what do you think that is? What are some of the differences there? How do we distinguish between the two? I think, I think from my background as a special ed teacher, being able to visually look at something and describe it without having to read text mm -hmm. helps them to maybe better understand the... All right. So when we think about visual literacy, when I say literacy, what comes to mind? Vision. Vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vision. When I just say literacy, vision. Mm -hmm. Text. 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 Reading. Reading. Writing. Writing. Communicating. Communicating. Words. Words. Analysis. Analysis, okay. 
So we've heard a lot of different things. When I say visual, what comes to mind? Seeing. Seeing. Pictures. Pictures. Images. Images. What else? Understanding. And so the world that we live in, there's a lot of images. When we think about 21st century learning and 21st teaching and learning, 21st century teaching and learning, we could actually communicate with nothing but images. We are teaching children who have created their own language that we wish we knew, right? We, nish, we wish we knew what they were talking about. They can give you an entire essay in images alone. And so reading the image is something that takes them a little bit deeper in terms of the meaning. They get their meaning when they're sending those emojis. Is, is that what they're called? My kids laugh at me all the time. All right, visual literacy. So visual literacy is the ability, guys, to interpret, negotiate, and make meaning from information presented in the form of an image, which is extending the meaning of literacy as we know it. When we think literacy, we generally think reading and writing. But when we say visual literacy, we're extending that, which commonly kind of signifies us interp an interpretation of written text. That's what the literacy part of that is. We're going to add to it. Visual literacy is based on the idea that pictures can be read, right? And that meaning can be gained through the process of reading that particular image. Similar to authors, artists and images explain characters, phenomena, events, themes that impact our lives, okay? So we're gonna connect today with artists. Why visual literacy? Read that first bullet for me. Help students to recognize the relationship between visual images and their everyday lives. Okay, what else? Why else might we wanna use visual literacy as a strategy to help kids um, become better critical thinkers. It engages and stimulates okay. uh, students with the content. And then one key that, especially in our English blocks or our reading blocks for my elementary teachers, what else? We enhance their reading and writing skills. We want to enhance their reading and writing skills. And so this is a way to help us to do that in a very non-threatening way, a way that makes them comfortable. Why? They do it all the time. They do it every day. Did you guys know that? Pictures in one glance or glimpse tell us more than words that, that than the words can convey in that same space and time. What are some of the barriers that we run into with print text? Spirit share. Not understanding the language. Not understanding the language. What else? Vocabulary. Vocabulary. What else? Struggling through the phonemics of reading, just struggling. struggling through the phonemics of reading, okay? And then if we have our EL kids, then we have a language barrier that we might have to take into um, context. And so there's a lot that goes on that they're having to negotiate and grapple with when we're putting print to text, especially if they haven't quite gotten those phonemic sounds down. They may not even understand the alphabetic characters completely. Um, at 3-5, we do still have kids who are actually exchanging B's with D's and P's with Q's. How many of you have that going on in your classrooms? So you recognize that. So we still have that that kind of switching up. By analyzing the images, we kind of take that away. We take that barrier away. What are some other things? The images are stimuli for writing. Because what's a barrier there? What's a barrier? When we have kids to introduce them to a topic, we show them a video, and then we have them go off and write. What's the barrier? Why don't we get always the product that we want? They might not understand the meaning of whatever they just watched or saw. May not understand what they just watched or saw. Back to what the first bullet says, they might have grappled with what they had to read if it was something that we gave them to read. What else? They can't connect to it. They can't connect. Why might they not be able to connect to what it is we're asking them to write from a topic perspective? Where might they be limited? There's nothing concrete. Their experiences. Right? And so images also allow us to take kids on a virtual field trip to expose them to the things that maybe they may not already readily 
experience in their day-to-day -day lives. And then what we're gonna do is, um, as we read the images, it's a close read. There's no one way to close read. There's a variety of different ways to close read, but we're gonna read with a specific purpose. And what's gonna help us kind of set the tone for that is we're gonna use the LEAP strategy. What do you think LEAP? If each letter be stands for something in LEAP, L-E-A-P, what do you think we're gonna be doing without even knowing? What do you think we're gonna be doing? Looking. At we might be looking. We might be looking at some things. Then what else, if we wanna go through the text, what else might we be doing? To evaluate. Might, might do some evaluation, might do some editing if we were writing. But we don't know yet what the E is. Let's keep going. What about the A? Analyzing. Okay. Might be analyzing. That's a ding, 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 ding buzzword, right? Accessing something, right? Accessing. What else might our A stand for? And analyzing does help us to do what? Access the meaning of the text. What else? Make associations. associations. Anything, associations, OK? Anything else for A? Keep it clean. What about P? Producing. Okay, producing. Publishing. Publishing, okay. Yeah. In your baskets, you guys have a training manual. I'd like for you to go ahead and pull that off and turn to the second page. You will see at the top, you'll see three, five. And it looks like that. You have a quadrant there. We're gonna call that the leap strategy quadrant. Okay, you guys are right. Leap, look, E, evaluation, A, analyze, and P, produce. Okay, when we look, when we're looking, I think somebody already said it, we're gonna be noticing, what do we notice? When we evaluate, Okay, because sometimes <clears throat> the reason why I go through this is sometimes we try to interchange, evaluate, and analyze. And so we want to be very clear when we're dealing with kids that they understand what exactly they're doing when they're evaluating, okay, versus looking and versus describing or um, even analyzing and producing. Why? Because those verbs, if you will, they help kids to frame what they're doing. They help them to frame the learning, okay? So, when we talk about evaluation, tell me your name. Gina. Gina, Gina, what are we gonna be doing when we, you can put that in your own words, you can read it verbatim, or you can put it in your own words. What are we gonna be doing when we're evaluating these images? Well, it's looking at the value that the image is going to add to their story. So okay. So, it's, it's an, an overall, um, looking at the image and the value that it's gonna add. Do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I wanna explore more? Do I wanna go deeper, right? Putting a value on it, making a judgment call, okay? What about analyze? What are those things, Cassandra, that we're gonna do? Uh, just looking at how the images help you uh, glean the message that the artist is trying to, um, to give. Okay, because like authors, artists are trying to tell us a story. They're telling a story. And so they want us to walk away with something. They don't just want us to look and say, hmm, that's nice, and keep moving, <laughs> right? They want to, um, sometimes artists are taking a social stance. Sometimes they're trying to really just share an experience with us, broaden our horizons. They are giving us the virtual field trip, but we should also be going through our minds. What do they want us to walk away with? And when we analyze, we do question that. And then why do we need to produce something? Help me out, Gail. Um, Something that shows that we understood what we saw or helps us to understand it better or helps us to show someone else what we got from it. And by that product being intentionally planned, as the facilitator of learning, what does that help me do? As remember, we're gonna be switching our hats from participant as 3-5 experiencing it, and then we're also gonna switch it to facilitators of learning because you guys are charged with the task to take this and go back and work through it. As facilitators of learning, what is the importance of the product being intentionally designed? Checking for understanding. Mm -hmm. Checking for understanding, and it helps me as a facilitator of learning to be able to what? Adjust where I need to adjust, mm -hmm. okay? All right, guys, you guys ready to take the leap? Yes. All right. So in your baskets, you guys actually have 
piece of art, okay? We're gonna look at these images and we're gonna dig deeper to unpack. Let's figure out who this woman is. What's she doing? Why is she doing it? What I'd like for you to do, you're gonna use it simultaneously with your um, leap strategy quadrant. All right, and you'll see that step one in the process is that we're gonna do a 30 second glance, all right? What I'd like for you to do, I'm gonna set the clock for 30 seconds, and I want you to just take 30 seconds to tell me what you notice. What do you see happening in that work of art? Go. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, please. Take 15 seconds to put, use your quadrant. And you're actually going to use the first quadrant that says look. I'd like for you to just jot down any thoughts that came to mind as you were analyzing that particular image. You have 15 seconds. Go. You're going to hold your thinking in the quadrant. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Take five seconds apiece. So we're going to do it for 10 seconds. I'll tell you when to switch. I want you to turn and talk to your elbow partner. And I just want you to share one thing that you noticed happening in the image. Go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. OK. So the purpose of the look phase, if you will, in the process is just to give an opportunity in a non-threatening way again to allow students to get into the text. And remember, the image is our text. So to get into the text. Now we're going to pull back another layer. And we're actually going to evaluate that particular text. And remember we said that evaluating is that process where we add value, give value, make a judgment call. So you're going to think about what do you think this work of art is about? What makes you say that? What message do you think that the artist is trying to convey or tell? And then I want you to jot down nouns and verbs that help you describe the story in the painting. Only nouns, okay, and verbs. Words that give us a person, place, or thing, and words that give us action. You may begin, go. Stop. Now what I'd like for you to do in the small white space around your image, I want you to write, and you're only getting 30 seconds, all of the adjectives that you could use to describe what's happening in the image. Okay? 30 seconds. You may begin. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. What are some of the adjectives that we came up with to describe that particular image? Colorful. Colorful. Determined. Determined. Focused. Focused. Beautiful. Beautiful. Skilled. What'd you say? Skilled. Skilled. Meticulous. Meticulous. OK. What are some noticings that we saw? The doll on the wall. OK, the puppet, the marionette doll on the wall. What else? The man in the yeah. bulb. The man in the <laughs> bulb. What's your thinking on that? Maybe someone's watching her, or mm -hmm. either um, 
maybe she has I thought about also the contrast between the work women do and the work men do mm. um, okay I thought supervisor me too supervisor okay you thought the artist why might the artist put um, in this case himself into the image narcissism <laughs> narcissism <laughs> what else so the title of this is Alma Sewing, okay? And Alma is sewing, but there's some other things that we can notice. Look at Alma's hands. So as we dig deeper, I gave you a nugget. We're gonna go into analyzing this particular image. We pointed out a lot of things when we looked at the descriptions, the adjectives. We also pointed out a lot of things um, as we talked about our noticings and what we were looking at in that phase one. Now we're gonna go to the third quadrant, analyze. How did the artist use the art to support the title? Okay, what supported it in the image? How do you know that? What might be happening beyond the scene? Who is the man in the light bulb? What are some possibilities there? What purpose does he serve? And what clues make you say that? Okay? So I want you to take a minute just to answer those questions for yourself. Kind of get your answers in your head. You're gonna have a collaborative conversation with your partner to kind of flesh out those things that are happening in that particular image. time. In your baskets, you guys have a die, okay? So shifting from participant to facilitator of learning. With your students, there are some norms that we need to set prior to their use with these particular die. Otherwise, someone may get hit in the head with this particular object, right? So no throwing, Right, those simple norms that we want to have happen when we're participating in group work. But you have six questions up here, okay? In those six questions, we have six sides obviously here. I want you to roll the die. You're gonna volley back and forth between you and your partner. Roll the die, whatever the number lands on, that's the question you're gonna answer, okay? We're gonna go through two rounds of that just to give everybody an opportunity to get comfortable with answering those questions. And so you'll do that as a participant. Shift mentally. As a facilitator of learning, um, you would want to give enough time for them to actually navigate probably six questions. These questions are designed with teachers in mind. You would want to design your questions as a teacher for your students with your students in mind. Um, some of these definitely they can answer and kind of elaborate on to help them analyze, but because we're trying to take them deeper into the text, right now they're going through it, right? They're going through the text and they're going deeper down before they come out with the produce stage. And so what we wanna make sure that we're doing is asking intentional questions to help them to pull meaning because ultimately they're gonna create a writing product. Remember our task, okay? All right, I'm giving you two minutes. Yes. Okay. Actually, I thought it's okay. I looked at their posture and how she's leaning over, working hard, and how he's just sitting yeah, back. Yeah, he's the man in so, so that I just thought it's kind of showed an interesting what contrast. What clues make you say that? Let this be your last <laughs> role. Like, man in the light bulb. Okay. Break it to a close. The man in the light bulb was the artist. Okay, so and I guess exactly. mainly because when I first glanced at it, it looked like he had an easel. An easel. I named him just kind of because. Okay. So when we get to the produce phase of this particular strategy, of our LEAP strategy in our quadrant, what we're doing is we're gonna use our adjectives, our nouns, and our verbs to create six-word memoirs or six-word stories, okay? That are explaining what's happening in the image. All right? So my example, Man watching woman sew many clothes. Does that capture something that's happening in that particular image? Mm -hmm. 
It does. Okay? Yours, you can't take mine. Okay? <laughs> you have to come up with your own. But you're going to use your adjectives that you wrote down around the image. And you're going to use your nouns and verbs that you use during the evaluation stage to create a six word. And you can only use six words. You don't get to throw an article in there and say, but that's an article. We didn't use those. You can only use six words. OK? And maybe I'll let you have an article. All right? You may begin. Figure out those last words and bring that to a close. So before we share this out, I want you to think with your facilitator, put your facilitator of learning hat on real quickly. Um, this wouldn't happen in one day, okay? We would have to be very, very thoughtful about how we pull this quadrant apart to help kids to go deeper into the image and into the message and the text, okay? So we're doing it in one day for training purposes, but remember it's for training purposes only. And so what we wanna do um, now, I'm gonna have you share out, but remember, why were we going through this process in the first place? Who were we in the beginning? We became somebody. Who were we? Do you remember in our learning task? You don't have to guess. It's right there. Class president. We are class presidents, right? What were we charged to do? Write an introduction. introduction. We're charged to write an introductory speech about? Someone we admire. Someone we admire. We have to think about the qualities of the woman in the painting and what's happening in the painting and what she's doing in the painting in order for us to really think about, well, why do we admire her? What's happening? Again, we might have phrased those questions differently, but I set you up for success as we navigated the leap strategy quadrant in order to allow you to give me products that are worth completing, one, and two, you feel probably pretty pumped to write that introduction. Okay, anybody want to share their six word story? Briefly, quickly, sure. spirit share. All right, Paula. Focused, work, sewing, looking, much material. All right, anybody else? Georgia? Woman intently meeting creative product deadline. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Lindsay? White collar leisurely observes diligent seamstress. Anybody else? Woman. Woman sewing, choosing, focusing, creating. All right. Skilled seamstress sews pretty white material. The man in the light bulb is the artist. Um, he did put himself in his art. You will always find him in his art, okay? Somewhere in the art. Um, maybe narcissist, maybe um, admiration, of the art that he created, which could be something else, right? Um, and so what you guys just kind of came up with, you did capture that. This is during the Great Depression. And so the thought in the image is, historically, is that during the Great Depression, it was all bad. This shows us it wasn't all bad. Okay, and so what we would do is actually partner this particular image with the text that gives the description of why the artist created this. You would give that to students. You could also do it as a narrative. You could also do it as a video, as a voiceover, to read that aloud to students so that they could have more information to then create this task. Okay? All right, so what I'd like for you to do as we close out is to start thinking about you're the class president, okay? We're revisiting that task. You're the class president. What would an introduction look like? Very quickly, right, maybe, quick introduction. It's not gonna be your masterpiece, and I don't want it to be a dissertation, but using all of the information that you've worked with. You can turn it over on the back. There's a space there for you to so just jot down the task 
And the task is actually right above your learning quad quadrant on your um, paper. All right. We're going to do what's called a chained conversation. All I want you to share is your first sentence. You're chaining and linking the conversation together. You can do this with words, you can do it with phrases, and you can do this with sentences. We're going to do it with sentences. You're going to share your first sentence. The reason why this is helpful, because the kids who don't maybe feel like they're ready to go off and write, I'm still building their idea toolbox in order for them to also have some success at this task as well. So it's providing a layer of support. So very quickly, we're gonna read your first sentence, first sentence only, you don't explain it, just read it. And as I point to you, just kind of join your chain together, link it together, okay? Paula? Here's a beautiful, determined, focused woman who knows what to do to get the job done. Times are hard, this person shows determination. She is an artist as she thoughtfully chooses fabric and shapes to create items. Alma is a diligent, conscientious, skilled worker. I like to introduce a talented, skilled seamstress who I truly admire. This woman diligently works with her calloused hands on her sewing. She is determined to support her family during the Great Depression. Introducing the beautiful and talented Miss Alma. Do you think we did a good job as class president? Mm -hmm. We were, we have the beginnings of something that actually is going to create an essay or um, a piece of writing that actually shows that we admire Alma a lot, don't we? I want you to just turn to the person closest to you and just kind of share what your thinking is about this particular art and what you notice. What are you noticing that's happening here? What do you notice that's going on in terms of the details of this particular painting? It's never going to end. Mm -hmm. What did the artist do in order to help us to jump into this particular painting? What techniques were used, do you think, that helped to tell this particular story? She's definitely focused. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's definitely focused. What else? What else is happening around that might tell us a little bit about her? Look at the scene. What else might tell us a little bit about the woman sewing? Maybe she likes to read. She looks like she has a plant she takes care of, so maybe she's, you know, she's very, she's careful about her work and she's careful about tending that plant. And mm -hmm. well, she, we can tell that she takes care of herself. Her, yeah. her, mm -hmm. um, her apron is well ironed, her hair is done, her earrings are on. She's, um, her face is taken care of, so mm -hmm. she's not just coming in unkept right. to, to get some work done. She takes care of herself. So it almost tells a different story. It's a different side of the Great Depression. Is what are we accustomed to seeing um, when we see pictures and images of the Great Depression? Despair, Despair desperation, lack of jobs, no income coming in, struggle.